welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel uh, today's our topic of discussion esophageal pathology so here we are going to deal two major esophageal condition that is tracheoesophageal fistula tef and then esophageal stitches or stenosis so first condition what is meant by tracheoesophageal fistula tef trachea we know that is our wind pipe esophagus we know that is our foot pipe what is mean by fistula fistula means this is the abnormal connection between the two organs or abnormal connection between the two body parts that is called the fistula okay so here where the abnormal connection is occurring means between the esophagus and then trachea so this is the called tracheoesophageal fistula okay so the fistula can occur between the two body parts or it can occur between the body parts to the external environment out of the body also the fistula can occur so what's the problem that will arise in the fistula means first thing we told there will be a abnormal connection between the trachea and then esophagus so because of this uh, connection what will happen so whatever content that is in the trachea that will easily move into the esophageal region tracheal content means air so through that this air through the fistula it can travel into the esophagus it will cause the gastric encephalation so whenever uh, we are do, uh, the content in the esophagus that easily move into the trachea that will cause the other problem so esophageal content means whatever we are, we are having through the mouth so water or food material that can travel through the fistula and then it will reach out the trachea thereby it will cause first airway obstruction aspiration first it will cause aspiration second it will cause obstruction airway obstruction if aspiration happen means what will happen it will create a uh, pneumonia that is called the aspiration pneumonia uh, because of the this is a non sterile content or food and uh, water is a non sterile content because of that what will cause it will cause the sepsis and then septic shock infection so those are the some consequences or problem that will arise in the tracheoesophageal fistula so what might be the causes first one some congenital anomalies so by birth itself the person may have a or the baby may have a some defect or apart from the congenital we have a some other causes that is comes under the acquired causes acquired causes means because of any tumors or any trauma some iatrogenic causes also will cause the tef iatrogenic causes means medical procedure like endotracheal tube intubation also leads to the tef so the next question will arise how the et tube will cause the uh, tef tracheoesophageal fistula this is more simple concept only so this is the trachea here we yeah what we'll do in a tracheal intubation so we will intubate the uh, et tube and then to anchor the uh, anchor our tube to secure our tube to place in our particular area we will inflate the cup so inflate the cup for, uh, reason for the inflation of cup for to anchor the tube so while anchoring while giving and so we will uh, inflate some 5 to 8 ml or 8 to 10 ml of air right so while doing in this uh, air inflation what will happen means it will create certain amount of pressure over the vascular region how means so this is the vascular here you are placing some cuff for uh, placing some cuff and then we are giving some pressure because of that pressure the resistance the resistance over the blood vessel will increase so outside that external pressure that will compress your vascular region so if it is compressing your artery means what will happen it will cause the ischemia am i right so the blood flow will affect so the particular portion uh, the blood flow will affect because of that it will cause ischemia so if the ischemia prolongs means what will happen that will cause the necrosis if the necrosis occurs means what will happen so over the time the portion that whichever area that get necrotized that wall will get the wall of that or the mucosal area or the region will get weaken easily it will get weak so weak means what will happen furthermore it will create a some passage that is called the fistula okay this is the way et tube is creating problem in the uh, fistula cases 
So, this is the reason why we should not intubate the case longer than the 10 to 14 days. So, if you are the person need a prolonged time of ventilatory support means in this case we have to move from the ET tube to the uh, or surgical airway management that is our uh, either uh, tracheostomy percutaneous or surgical uh, tracheostomy we have to go for. Again uh, tracheostomy wise. Uh, we can't eliminate, we can't tell uh, tracheostomy won't prevent that complication still uh, there will be a risk or there but compared with an endotracheal tube intubation tracheostomy have a, some minor risk. And then coming into management, so we told two major consequences, first thing that will cause the pneumonia, second thing that will cause the sepsis. This is the two major complication that will arise in the RTEF, tracheoesophageal fistula. How we can tackle over this condition? Remember, with whenever we are handling the uh, or whichever case we are uh, coming into the management part, two things we have to do. First one, prevention strategy. Second one, we have to tackle over that situation or we have to defense the condition. Okay, prevention and then defensive manner. Prevention. So, how here we told pneumonia and sepsis. First, we will see the pneumonia. How we can prevent pneumonia or how we can uh, so, pneumonia is the reason because uh, pneumonia how it is occurring because of the aspiration. So, how the reason for the pneumonia is aspiration. So, the, or, uh, we, we are going to find a solution for how to prevent aspiration. So, already something get aspirated means leave it. How we can prevent further aspiration? For that we can do if the person have a oral secretion means we can do for the uh, any uh, orotracheal suctioning that is one of the technique we can do or else before doing in suctioning we have to first position the person. We can prop up the head then thereby we can uh, prevent the uh, aspiration right that is one technique or we can do the orotracheal suctioning we can do. If the person uh, have any risk of further more aspiration means if the person in mental state is also drowsy means straight away we can go uh, go for the or endotracheal intubation. Again, uh, so I know this is one of the complicated case already the person have a fistula. Again, if you are intubated means properly we have to do the intubation. So, you, your cuff should be placed below the fistula area uh, that is a little more difficult anyway to secure the airway uh, we have to go for or else we can do the uh, cricothyrotomy. Uh, needle cricothyrotomy also we can go for. So, anyway these are the procedures furthermore definitely it will create a problem or if you want to uh, avoid these are the complications straight away we can go for the BVM ambu ventilation. Still ambu ventilation because of the positive pressure again it will create the gastric encephalation. So, this is somewhat difficult case anyway uh, uh, roughly we can calculate if it is adult cases means how much will uh, a length or depth will intubate up to 21 to 23 centimeter. So, you can go for 24 or 25 centimeter likewise you can approximately we can calculate after intubation slightly or uh, inflate the cuff and then ascultate for the both lung sounds. So, in this case if you are going 25, 26, 28 means it can go into the right or left main bronchus. Again, that is also one of the problem. So, anyway, so think about the 22 to 21 to 23 centimeter means you can go for 24 or 25 centimeter, secure the cuff, and then you just ascultate both side lung. So, those are the some uh, things we can go for, and then coming into other side defensive strategy. So, this is for the preventive strategy, defense how we can defense. So, already the person have a aspiration pneumonia. Aspiration pneumonia means definitely that will affect our gas exchange and then breathing part, okay. Ventilation, breathing part, gas exchange it will affect. So, how we can tackle over this case? So, we have to administer more amount of high flow oxygen that is recommended one. Or if we have a uh, high flow oxygen through the or uh, NRBM that we can administer and then we have to maintain the oxygen saturation. That is one of the thing in the pneumonia. Coming into sepsis. What is the major consequences for uh, arise in sepsis means hypotension, hypotension is a major one of the thing. So, here for to tackle over the hypotension we have to administer the volume resuscitation with the normal crystallite fluids. So, if the person is uh, not uh, revert back uh, because of uh, refractory to fluid bolus mean then we have to move about the vasopressors that is our noradrenaline. The definitive treatment for the TEF is a surgical repair. Okay. 
Then coming into second condition that is our esophageal stitcher, stitcher or you can remember as a stenosis. So, compare with a stitcher, stenosis easily we can understand, right? Stenosis means narrowing, okay? Abnormal narrowing. So, stenosis means narrowing, it is an abnormal narrowing of the structure. So, the esophagus can become narrowed as a result of inflammation, tumors, infection because of acid reflex or GERT, gastroesophageal reflex disease. How GERT will affect means? So, the, or in our GERT, so the, uh, because of the reflex disease, ulcer will form. In ulcer, later stages, it will cause the fibrosis, scar formation will occur, right? Through that uh, scar formation, it can cause the or stenosis or esophageal stitches, okay? So, mainly in this case, what will happen? So, this is the normal diameter. Whenever you are, that uh, diameter get red, uh, whenever the stenosis will occur, the diameter, the pathway, that uh, passage diameter will reduce because of that only that will arise the consequences or complication will arise. So, this is the normal or sorry, this is the stenosed esophagus we can see in the picture. So, assessment wise mainly the person will present with the complaints of dysphagia and then odinopagia. First, initially, the initial progression of disease, the person will complain about the dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing. And then later stages, if disease get progress, means the person will present with the odinopagia, that is the painful swallowing. Odinopagia means painful swallowing. Okay. As the disease process, the person will present with the different, different status. So, again, the person will present with a multiple history of multiple episodes of choking also one of the thing because of that uh, esophageal obstruction the person will present with a choking problem also they may have a volume of secretion and sensation of choking with the spitting of or gogging on a large quantity of saliva these are the some uh, common complaints or subjective data we can get from the person it may be accompanied with the difficulty in breathing. How it is causing difficulty in breathing means because of the gagging secretion, it will uh, compromise your airway. So, it will put a question over the airway patency. It will obstruct your airway. That is why it will causing the difficulty in breathing. Cyanosis in this case very rare. Uh, it, actually, cyanosis is a late stain, but here the problem in the esophagus, not in the trachea. That is the reason it won't cause any peripheral or central cyanosis. So, finally, management, how we can tackle over this case means main problem here is a airway secretion. Second problem, the person have a odinopagia or dyspagia. So, odinopagia, dyspagia, later stage we can in a definitive care we can treat. First, our major important concern is a life threat that is our uh, airway compromise. So, we told because of any gagging, uh, gagging of secretion, oral secretion in the oral cavity that will put a person in the aspiration and then that will uh, aspirate means that will affect our breathing and then gas exchange. In other side, because of that uh, uh, secretion or that oral mucosa that will cause the airway obstruction. So, this is the two major thing we are going to manage. Again, coming into the again the preventive strategy, defensive strategy. How we can prevent the further uh, aspiration means we can put, uh, we can position of the person that is the first thing. Second thing we can do the oral suctioning. So, that is the two technique uh, we can follow. And then third one, pharmacological agent wise, Glucagon is a one of the agents that have a some limited effect over the esophageal stitches. What it will do means the glucagon will uh, relax our smooth muscles. So, it will relax our esophageal muscles thereby whatever content in the esophagus that easily can move, move into the gastric part. So, this is the one of the uh, we can give the IV or usually glucagon will use in the case of hypoglycemia, severe hypoglycemia. Mainly we can go with an IV route or IM route also we can go for. So, glucagon is a one of the drug of choice where we can uh, try, but the thing is it have a limited effect only on the stitches, okay. So, do your best, Shalom.